Hello and welcome back to the VR narrative series. In this one, we're going to take a look at how we can construct a scene and light it in VR. So for those of you that watched the first one, um, that one was about a, a brief project overview about what we were doing and also having a look at some of the art assets as well. Well, throughout all of the week, I've been spending the evenings creating some 3D props to make the cabin feel a little bit more lived in and believable. So now we've got the table over here and we've got stuff on the table. Got some really nice looking um, props from cups to a radio and, and to a lantern as well. And this is just a very simple setup scene just so you can dive into VR and have a look and get a feel for the space. So there's some key elements in here that are going to play a big part in the story. These um, fairy lights, I think they're called. Well, yeah, I think they're called fairy lights in the UK anyway. Um, well, like string lights, whatever. These lights here, these are going to be, be part of the animation. And then we've got a radio, which is going to be another key component as well. But this one's all about how I, I want to light the scene. Um, and we're going to go through how we can do that together. So stage one is we're going to go to File, New Scene. And you're going to get uh, the scene templates. We're going to choose the basic indoors HDRP and go ahead and click Create. That's going to go ahead and create an empty scene in your project and it's going to put in the main camera, sky fog volume and a spotlight in the scene for us. The reason I want to use real time lighting for this is because some of the elements that are going to be animated are mainly going to be light elements. Because there's going to be these UFOs flying around outside the cabin and it's going to be playing with light outside. And that's going to cast light into the cabin. So I need it to be as dynamic as possible. So. If you're a patron, then you will have access to this project and you'll also have access to the cabin artwork, which is a prefab. I'll just go ahead and drop the cabin straight in the scene and you can see here uh, it's all ready to go. All the artworks, geared, lanterns on, lights are in the corner and that's great. And that's what we're going to be using for this tutorial. But so in the description for this video, you'll see that there's a link that's for the basic version of the artwork. It's just the block out that I used and it contains, I'll turn the lights off to be able to see, it contains just the primitive shapes of the cabin. So you can use this cabin basic artwork to follow along with the tutorial. So the prefab is set up like so, it's, it should be all ready to go. This is just all the artwork, it's in its kind of default state if you like. And I've got the, the main light source at the moment, or the only real light source, is coming from my lantern. If I show you that lantern, let's click on it and see we've got the lamp glass. And inside the lamp glass, we've got a point light. Its mode is set to real time. Quite, because it's coming from like a lantern, it's quite a warm light. So the temperature is just left of the center towards the orange. And I've, we've enabled volumetrics for this light too. And it, you can see here as I move around, you might not be able to see it with the YouTube compression, but I've got like almost like a, a smoky kind of dusty filled cabin. You can see if I turn, maybe if I turn it off and on, you see it, what that's doing to the lighting. This kind of softens everything up and gives it a little bit of a glow. And that's really cool there. As you can see as, I, as the camera pans around, you've got that line here where that um, handle of the lantern breaks the light. It looks really cool and that's all working nice in VR. The shadows that this light creates are all, um, on the point light. We've got our, this is what it looks like without the shadows enabled and then with the shadows enabled. It looks very cool. The only thing I'm not too sure about at this stage is the, the shadows that the actual casing of the light is giving off and if we wanted to turn that off we could just go ahead on the meshes and where we've got our lamp here we can just say cast shadows off. Um, but then everything else in the scene will keep shadows on. So as we move it around, you'll see everything else is casting shadows apart from the lamp itself, which is more realistic if it was, it just doesn't look so great. So I think for now, I'm gonna, we're gonna leave those off just because it is quite distracting and there'll be like lines going all over the place. If you watch again, see, move around whilst it looks cool and very dynamic, it will make it feel a little bit disorientating, I think, and potentially, Make you feel a little bit ill in VR if you've got all this stuff moving around. So maybe let's try it off for a minute and then we can always turn it back on later and see how it looks. So nothing really special going on with the lighting at the moment. It's just coming from this one point light with its volumetrics and shadows enabled and the resolution of the shadow map is set to 1024. There would be this option as well to enable the contact shadows, which whilst it makes it look more realistic, 
you can see as I toggle things off and on there. Uh, I don't feel we're really going to get a benefit of it in VR as such. So I think we'll go ahead and leave that off for the time being. Again, we can have a look at that later on when we're in VR. So that's our main light source at the moment. And when we start moving into the story and setting up timeline and animating some of these components, you'll see, really see the benefit of these shadows that get cast around from the objects in the cabin. And it's going to look amazing in VR. So that's that light source. Our second light source are these lights. Now these are going to work a little bit differently. As we move through our story, these lights are going to be animated. And if any of you have seen Stranger Things, when there's someone in the Upside Down and they go near an energy source or lights, um, you, they can manipulate them in the Upside Down and it affects the real world. That's kind of what's going to happen here. Totally different story from Stranger Things. But um, these lights are going to, we're going to be able to manipulate these lights based on the proximity of another object. That's how we're going to control it. So as something gets near it, all the lights are going to go off and then only the lights that are within the range of this target are going to come on because we're going to be able to animate that target and do some cool, interesting things with this light in our story. The idea being that you're in your lodge and you hear that there's been some UFO encounters in the area and the story, you're going to kind of shrug it off, but then strange things are going to start happening in the, in the cabin. You'll hear noises on the roof. Think signs with Mel Gibson, but in a cabin. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and look at how we can do that with these lights, these fairy lights here. Hopefully you can see that on the video okay. How we can control the visibility of these lights based on the proximity of another object. And all these objects are, these little points of light, are just little pieces of mesh They're called the light tips. And you can toggle them on and off. And that's what we're going to do through our script. So let's have a look at how we can create that. In our scene, I want to control all the scripted elements. I don't want to have to go through my cabin prefab and um, put scripts on individual things because it'll be hard to find later on when we try and do it all in timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this scripted elements. And that's going to be at 0, 0, 0. Let's bump it to the top. And we'll create a new game object in here. We'll call this one rope light, call that rope light controller. And then in the project, you want to go to scripts and then anywhere in the scripts folder, right click, go create, create a new C sharp script, rope light controller. And we'll go ahead and put the rope controller on our rope light controller game object in the scene. And we'll double click it to open up in Visual Studio. Alrighty. So a second ago, I showed you how the rope lights are put together, and we have got all those little individual light bulbs. I think there's like 48 of them that we're going to control individually. Um, and now we don't want to have to animate all of those by hand using timeline and whatever. So we're going to do that through script. So the first thing we're going to need to create is a way to access all of those bulbs. So we can use a collection for that the type of collection we're going to use is a list. So we're going to say public list. The things we want this list to hold is going to be mesh renderers. And we'll call this light that's going to be a new list of mesh renderers, brackets at the end. Next thing we're going to need is an object that represents a position in space so that as that object gets close to the lights, they're going to come on. A public transform for this proximity object. And then we'll need a float. So we'll go ahead and create a float. And this is going to represent maximum distance that that object can be from the lights before it's activated. Max range from we can go ahead and give that a default value of one. That's one meter. So as soon as that object becomes becomes within one meter of the light, then that particular light will turn on. Everything else will turn off. Next up, we're going to create a method. It's going to be a public method. This is going to be called track target object. Void in there. And we're basically going to want to go through the list and see how close our target object is to each of our light bulbs. So we're going to use a for each loop to do that. So for each mesh renderer, renderer in our list, which is called light mesh renderers, I'm going to get the distance, store, store that in a temporary variable there. The way we get that distance is by using vector free distance and a measure from our renderer position. So that where, whatever current little light bulb we're on in our list, we can use that. Position, so transform.position, proximity object, position. 
Now we can do a quick conditional check. If that distance less than the max range from target, that means that the target object is close enough for this light object to turn on. So that current renderer that we're checking will enable it. All we're doing is basically turning the mesh renderers on and off to give the effect that the lights are coming on. Else, if it's not, just go ahead and turn it back off. So this will work, this will run, but only once at the moment. We need to do this every single frame of our game. So we're going to say up, we use the, the update method and we'll just call that function track target object every frame. Now you could elaborate on this here a little bit um, to see that if it's already enabled, you could do another check that if, if that mesh render was already enabled, we won't go ahead and re-enable it again. We'll just return. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I don't think we need to worry too much. But now when we go ahead and, and run the game, the all the lights should go out until uh, a, a target object gets within range and then that particular set of lights will come on. So let's dive back into Unity a second. Kapow! And on our rope light controller, you'll see it wants... Let's go through it. We, we click on here. This is our light mesh renderers where we need these. Go ahead and click on our lights. You see here we've got quite a few lights. So we go back to our rope light controller. We'll lock the inspector so that when we click on something it doesn't change. That's going to enable us to click on the top one. Scroll down to the bottom. Hold down shift and select all of them. And then drag that into light mesh renderers. Just where it's written there. And it'll put all those into the list. Uh, right, and now it needs a proximity, proximity object. So we can right click, go create empty let's just make an empty cube for a second call this object and we'll put that inside our rope light controller now we can unlock our inspector so for our proximity object we don't need the mesh filter we actually you know what we could have just made an empty game object we we'll just remove all the components including the box collider so it's just this point in space and set it to zero 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 so now if we drag in our proximity object into our a rope light controller there that should all hook up then if we go ahead and hit play i'm going to drag out my game window a second so you can see both of them i'm just going to be concerned with the scene objects the scene for a minute i press play i grab the proximity proximity object you can see all my lights are off and as i bring in my target object here you can see the lights that are turning on and then i can move this and my lights start animating and this is going to be coming real handy later on when um, there's weird things happening in the cabin and uh, as there's noises moving around, these lights will activate, giving you the impression that something is coming towards you. It's going to be very, very cool. Hopefully you can see that working all right. And it might not make sense yet because we're just putting in the, the systems for creating our animations later on. But this will be a real time saver when it comes to animating these lights. Otherwise, in timeline, we'll be having to create an animation of all these lights coming on and then coming off. And it's just be a nightmare. But we've got this dynamic object that we can move around. It's going to affect these lights. We'll do clever things. We can just animate this position and have it control the lights. And we can control the range of when things are activated as well. But by default, as we've got it set up at the moment, the lights are going to come off straight away as soon as the script runs. So we need a way to stop that from happening. So in our script, we need a way to check whether the animation should be allowed to be formed or not. All we'll do is at the top, we'll create a new public, a new ball, and we'll just simply call this allow light animation. And by default, we want our lights to be on, so we'll say false. We'll toggle it on when we're ready. And then in update, we can do a quick check of that ball and if it's false, so we'll use the exclamation mark, say allow light animation, we'll just return. It won't carry on after that. So if we're not allowed to track the object yet, it'll just return and keep going until we are. But we need a way to toggle this on. So at the bottom, we'll create a new method called toggle animation, and we'll pass that a parameter. We're going to pass it a ball. We'll say should animate. And then all we want to do there is assign our allow light animation to that ball property. So if it's if we if we want to toggle it on, we'll pass true. Allow light animation will become true, and then it'll start tracking the object. But what about when we want to reset our lights? Maybe at the end they all come back on, or we want the ability to turn them off altogether. 
And we can create another method. We'll call this toggle all lights. And again, we'll create another ball. We'll call this toggle state. And we'll use our for each loop again. We can go ahead and copy that up here. And then we can say that our renderer, whether it's enabled or not, depends on our toggle state. That just gives us the ability to turn them all on and all off together if we want to. It's just there if we need it. So I'm back in Unity now. What will happen is we've got our um, rope controller here. When we go ahead and press play, all these lights will stay on now until we're ready to use Timeline to send the signal to the rope controller, turn all the lights on, and start looking at the target object. There we go. So those are the, the two kind of key lights in our scene at the moment. It's the, the spotlight. And everything's done in real time. And, and this is going to look really cool when, um, like, for example, let's click on this light a second. Let's just turn it off. Oh, it's all dark. And then once we, if we create a, another light in here, just create a point light for the time being. There we go. Let's crank its intensity up. Let's make it look UFO-ish. And this is where you're going to see, this is when it's spooky and you've got the UFOs buzzing around outside. And cast all these lights in there and you're not really going to know what's going on. It's going to be really disorientating. And really spooky. That's going to look awesome in VR. So that's our scene at the moment, and that's what we've got for our lighting. We've got this real-time lighting going on here to allow the environment to be really dynamic and interesting inside VR. My project settings, under the quality settings. Under quality, you see I'm using just a normal HDRP. Nothing funky going on, as far as I know. I don't think I changed anything. Under lighting, I've just got these picked here. I've got the volumetric fog on there, because that's really important for this. But it's pretty much just Unity out of the box, nothing funky going on. And we'll see as we go along what we need to do. If we need to do any optimizations, then we can do. At the moment, it's all running well. I'll put a build of this up on my Patreon page, and you can go ahead and take a look. And don't forget that I've also got that prefab in the description of the basic artwork for the cabin, which will still all work. If I turn off the cabin artwork here, the, the wash stuff, you'll still be able to do the same to follow along with the tutorial because the lights are included with that basic set too. There we are guys, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. Um, it's been a lot of fun doing all these assets, really had great fun in making these and I've been posting shots on my Instagram page as I've been making them. So what we'll look at next week is bringing in our VR hands and start having a look at the first bit of animation using Timeline. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.